Hey internet friends! It's been a while since I've uploaded an accelerated history slash explanation video, and I figured it was about time to make one on Zionism. For many of you, this will not be new information, but not all of us are there yet. And this video is for those navigating the labyrinth of information out there. So let's get started. By definition, Zionism is a movement for originally the reestablishment and now the development and protection of a Jewish nation in what is now known as Israel. The movement originated in the eastern and central parts of Europe and became a political organization in 1897. The Zion part of Zionism refers to a hill in Jerusalem. But before we move on, let's make something really clear here. Zionism is not Judaism. Judaism is a religion, whereas Zionism is a political ideology for one type of people. You can be ethnically Jewish and not practice Judaism. You don't have to be Jewish in order to be a Zionist. Even Joe Biden says so. Early on when I was a kid, I'd say, when I was a young senator, I'd say, if I were a Jew, I'd be a Zionist. I am a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. Now, as many of you know, I'm from the South, specifically the Bible Belt of the United States, where Christian Zionism is commonplace, or the Christian belief that God's chosen people have a divine right to the Jewish state, also known as the Promised Land. And if you don't agree, then bless your heart, you're literally Hitler. Of course, this belief stems from the Bible, the belief that the Jews returning their homeland is fulfilling biblical prophecy. In the book of Genesis, God called Abraham out of his homeland and made a promise. To your descendants, I will give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. This verse serves as one of the supporting arguments for Christian Zionism. Bearing that in mind, regular old Zionism allegedly got its start in response to the resurgence of anti-Semitism. What's funny is that among the considerations for a Jewish state were Argentina, Uganda, Cyprus, and even Texas. Throughout the early 1900s, numerous Zionist groups began to pop up across the United States, with various publications serving as a vehicle for Zionist propaganda. The goal was to influence both the United States Congress and the general public, though the sentiment amongst U.S. officials at the time was that Zionism countered both U.S. interests and principles, since it involved matters related to countries other than the United States. But then the world erupted into war. During World War I, which resulted in the fall of the Ottoman Empire, a secret agreement took place called the sykes picot Treaty. And this treaty was whipped up in 1916. It drew out the new borders of the Middle East, dividing the region into states, and under that treaty, Palestine was placed under international control. Post-World War I, the British assumed control over Palestine, and only one year after the sykes pico Treaty was signed came the Balfour Declaration. Nestled in a letter between the United Kingdom's Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour and addressed to Walter Rothschild, the Declaration promised Palestine as a home for the Jewish people. Keep in mind, this was the Rothschild banking family who were among those actively funding both sides of the First World War. And the same practice was applied to World War II because countries who were at war needed money in order to arm their soldiers and keep them fed, among other things. But monetary profit was just icing on the cake for Rothschild Zionism. In order to fully execute their Zionist state, a hub that would serve as a means of control over the Middle East, they needed Jewish people to have motivation to reside there and global superpowers to support it. Leading up to this time, Zionists were actively buying up land in Palestine and settling there, where Palestinian Jews, Christians, and Muslims already resided. And yes, it's true, Palestinians did attempt revolt before the State of Israel was officially established in 1948, which Zionists cited as being motivated by anti-Semitism. But if you take a step back and objectively look at what was taking place, Palestine was their home, and it was obvious to the Arabs that it was being invaded, taken from them. So now that we've covered the history of Zionism up to the creation of the State of Israel in 1948, let's talk about the results of a Jewish ethnostate. Following the creation of the State of Israel, 700,000 Palestinian civilians were expelled and fled from their homes, in what some might refer to as an ethnic cleansing of sorts, which seems pretty anti-Semitic to me, since by definition a Semite is anyone who speaks a Semitic language. Since 1948, Israel has implemented a regime of settler colonialism, apartheid, and occupation over the Palestinian people, with war being a daily reality. In 1967, the Six-Day War between neighboring Arab states and Israel took place, with Israel coming out ahead, capturing and occupying the Gaza Strip in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem and, of course, the Syrian Golan Heights. Despite the UN calling for Israel's withdrawal, they've held on to these lands. 
which has really caused some problems, not just for Israel and the neighboring regions, but for everyone. The Zionist defense of the treatment of Palestinians is that Israel was isolated and abandoned by everybody after World War II. They had to fend for themselves and were surrounded by hostile states. They claimed that their actions were out of self-defense. After all, Jewish Zionists see themselves as God's chosen people. In this territory, in their view, was given to them by God, and it was their destiny to take it. A part of this Zionist manifest destiny was perpetual war in the Middle East. It's very reminiscent of how American colonists violently stole more and more land from Native Americans over time. You know, resulting in Native American genocide. But Israel's expansion into the greater Israel through wars of conquest, as well as their human rights violations, go unpunished by the United Nations. Though in 1975, the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 3379 determined that Zionism was a form of racism and racial discrimination. However, this determination was revoked in 1991. But still, it seems like while Israel is a Jewish state, it's only for a certain type of Jewish people. In the Palestinian Jews that were there already, or the Ethiopian Jews, for example, that were transported there throughout the 80s and the 90s, while they seem less than desired there. And what's ironic about all of this is that there is debate about the origin of these European Jews who started the Zionist movement, as a number of them have ancestry that has been traced back to, well, not the original 12 tribes of Israel, but back to the Khazarian Empire where they converted to Judaism, taking on the Jewish identity. And there is speculation that these are the fake Jews the Book of Revelation warned about. To summarize, Israel has and continues to commit human rights violations against Palestinian civilians, as documented by the UN and human rights organizations. These are repeated examples, daily tragedies, that the global superpowers have turned a blind eye to. Presumably in the United States, it's because the Zionist lobby has a great deal of power. And any criticism of Israel and its practices is silenced by accusations of anti-Semitism. The violence continues because Israel receives support from the governments around the world, as well as corporations. For example, in 2016, the United States finalized a deal with Israel for $38 billion in military aid to be distributed there over the next 10 years. And even before that, Israel was the largest recipient of American aid. Since the creation of Israel, American soldiers have fought and died in wars that were a result of the Zionist agenda. And as of December 6, 2017, the United States has recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, a move that is undoubtedly going to worsen tensions between Israel and its neighbors. So what will that mean for American soldiers? The whole Jerusalem move, it's just an odd move altogether, given that Israel seems to operate straight out of Washington, D.C., not Jerusalem. So why wouldn't they just make Washington, D.C. their capital? But to put it all in perspective, the reality of Zionism is that European Jews who were allegedly oppressed and fled their homeland as a result of being marginalized now oppress another group of people, forcing them to flee their homeland. But question it and you're labeled anti-Semitic. But that's all right, I've been called anti-Semitic before. I'm sure somebody's rattling away on their keyboards in a rage calling me anti-Semitic right now. So my question is, if European Jews suffered so greatly during the Holocaust, which I was repeatedly taught in school and told not to question, why is it that they practice ethnic cleansing in their own Jewish state? And why do Christian Zionists support this ethnic cleansing with their silence? Yes, wars of conquest, colonization, and oppression of certain peoples, it's a tale as old as time. But you and me were living in the now, during an information war, during an era of deception, with global leaders who claim to be civil and humane, but operate under illusion, using religion as a form of disguise. But everything I've just covered in this video, this is Zionism with its mask off. This is a promised land flooded by blood and tears. This is a culture of endless war. This is death. What do you think, internet friends? You know I always look forward to your comments. Thank you so much for subscribing and supporting my channel on Patreon. Bye!